Style transfer is the process of taking usually a piece of art or some sort of pattern and kind of taking the essence or style of that piece of art and superimposing it over a new piece of content, which is typically just a picture you've taken or a video. We're going to be using an open source tool to, uh, that leverages Python and also TensorFlow. So we're going to set up a Docker container for you guys to work out of and everything's going to be ready for you to begin your development. So we've set you up to do this sort of development by creating a Docker container that houses all our dependencies, but also spins up a Python notebook, which is a really good way, um, kind of a user-friendly way to interface with some of these um, machine learning libraries. So step one is to just run this command here. And all this is going to do is download and pull this image here, which is our style transfer image. But it's also going to boot up the Python notebook server and expose it on a particular port. But really all you need to know is that you need to run this command here. And the assumption is here that you have Docker installed. So I'm just going to open up a fresh terminal here. And I'm going to just run this command. And we'll notice that on running that command, it's going to give us a hyperlink. And this link is going to point to our Python notebook. So I'm just going to take this link and I am going to put it into the browser. And I can see, okay, this is my Jupyter notebook and it, it is set up for us to do some style transfer. So there's some bo boilerplate files here. Um, but if we navigate into neural style, TF master, this is where we can do our style transfer development. So just a couple things to note here. Um, there's some directories. Uh, image input is the directory where, where we're going to put our content images, which are the images that we want to modify, that we want to apply style changes to. Image output is going to be where the program after applying the style changes, writes the output files. And styles is going to be where we can house the different styles that we want to uh, superimpose onto our images. Now there's a bunch of boilerplate styles that we can leverage, things like Starry Night and so forth. So those are there if you want to use those. But let's come back over to our actual notebook, which is training. and this notebook is where we can actually perform our style transfer. So there's a couple of different parts here. This first cell, all it does is pulls the style image that we're going to use and just shows us what it looks like so we can see what we, what we expect the style to be. So all this is doing is going into the styles directory and pulling fractal.png and printing it out here so we can see what that looks like. And it's kind of this trippy image. This cell goes into our image input directory and prints out an, a picture I took called boston.png. It's my friend's roof deck. And this is going to be the actual content image that we want to modify. This third and fourth cell here is the actual training command. So this one is just if you want to supply more than one style image, but we just want to supply a single style image. So this command uh, invokes the Python runtime on neuralstyle.py with the following arguments. Um, the first argument is the image that we want to modify, that boston.png image right here. The second image is this, I mean the second argument is the style that we want to invoke on it which is fractal.png and that's this over here. So again content image, style image, and then these are things like the number of iterations that we want it to run for, the name of the output file. Do we want to keep the original colors or have the colors be adopted as well? And then device, if we want to run it on a CPU or GPU. I only have a CPU available here. I would encourage you, if you have GPU, to leverage that. It'll be a lot more performant. And then this just calls the most verbo verbose uh, logging settings so we can see what's going on as it goes. So if we run that command, you can see it pulls this, the VGG network. Um, and then it does the actual training, and then it says it's done. 
And then this last cell here just calls the output image. And we called it fractal.png. And this is going to be the actual result of that training. And you can see here the style has changed. Now there wasn't a whole lot of permutations, so it's not um, very dramatic, but you can still see that it pulled in a lot of the style elements there. And then just down here, these are all the additional um, arguments that you can kind of tinker around with as you're playing uh, with this script here. But let's do one together just in case um, you want to know how to do it without any of the boilerplate images here. So um, I'm just going to go into Chrome and um, I'm going to find a content image. Um, I've been listening to Logic today, so I'm thinking let's use an image of him yeah. as our content image. So let's see here. Maybe this just be the intro like All this. right, let's pick this one right here. <laughs> That's it. So I'm just going to screenshot this. Okay, so that's our content image, and now we need a style image. So he is a vocal fan of Rick and Morty. So I'm thinking we can use Rick and Morty as our style. So I'm going to find a Rick and Morty picture, and I have no idea what this is going to look like, but let's give it a shot. So we have our content image, which is that picture of logic. We have our style image, which is in the style of the cartoon Rick and Morty. And all we need to do now is get that into our Docker container. And that's really straightforward uh, with the Jupyter Notebook. We can just navigate into directory that we want to add the image to, and we can just do upload. So I'm going to pull it from my desktop. And again, this is the Rick and Morty style, so I'm just going to call it Rick and Morty.png. We should maintain the file extension or else it won't work. So that should be good. And then we just need to upload our input image. So let's do that. And I'm just going to call this logic.png. And I'm going to come back over to my script. So the assets should be available. So I'm just going to supply them in here and make sure that they're being pulled correctly. So there should now be an image called Rick and Morty.png. So I'm going to execute this cell. OK, great. So that image is available. And then there should also be a new content image called Logic.png. So I'm going to run this cell. OK, looking good. So let's just modify the script here. And let's change the content image to logic.png, the style image to Rick and Morty.png. We're going to do six iterations. Let's, um, yeah, we'll keep the original. No, let's, because, because the Rick and Morty style has dramatic colors, let's have the colors be adopted as well. So I'm going to remove the argument to keep original colors. So it's going to also, in addition to um, pulling like the contour and the style, it's going to pull the colors as well. And I'm going to run it on my CPU. Um, OK, so let's run the training here. So this will take a while. Um, again, uh, six iterations is not a whole lot. You might want to do a hundred, you might want to do a thousand, but depending on the size of the image and the number of iterations, it will take longer to perform. So let's just wait for this here. So there's a couple different parameters that you can fine tune when you're doing style transfers. You can uh, specify whether you want to put more emphasis on the style, which is the, the piece of art or the pattern that you're trying to pull the essence from, or you can put more emphasis on the piece of content, which is the image that you want to superimpose the style onto. And there are a bunch of other parameters that you can fine tune as you go. Okay, so it looks like it's done here. So I printed out done, which is the last line in the cell here. So that looks good. So I'm going to run this cell, and it should pull the final result image. So let's take a look. Okay, so this is the final result. So 
again, um, six iterations is not a lot, but you can see the color is starting to be pulled in here as well as his face is becoming more and more cartoonish. So you can kind of see it's pulling some of those features in here. But this is something where you might run, want to run it like a thousand times on a GPU card probably. But you can see that it is working here. Generally speaking, the more steps or the more iterations that you do, uh, the, the, the better the, the transfer is going to be. But also, um, the size of the image is going to be, is gonna be um, factored in for the performance. So it's going to take longer if the quality of the image is higher. If you want to um, in, uh, improve the performance of your training, I suggest that you use this max size argument. And what this will do is this will constrain the file size of your image and it dramatically improves training. So for instance, I can pull this here and this, this image is probably like 400 by 500, something like that. So if I add in this argument, max size, and then do, um, you know, 150, I could probably get away with doing like 20 iterations um, really quickly. So let's try. Now the, the only con is the image size is not going to be as big. So it's kind of more um, uh, suitable for kind of proof of concept. And then if you like the results, you can take some more time and run it at full resolution. Okay, and it's already done. So you can see it took 53 seconds. Let's try this here. So the image size is smaller, but you can see the style is much, much more dramatic. Um, it's kind of looking scary now, so I wouldn't call that an improvement necessarily. But the point is you can play around with different images and different styles, and you can come up with some really, really artistic, cool results. So let me know what you guys come up with. Feel free to share. Feel free to reach out to me with any questions. And thank you for listening.